Hey, I'm Kirk Harnack with Telos, We're here to tell you about the Zip1. I'm going to give you a little overview of it and a quick start, how to get your Zip1 up and going quickly, getting audio from here to there uh, over an IP connection, like maybe the internet. Well, first of all, here is the Zip1. It's a one rack unit box. I just took this one out of the box and already peeled the little uh, safety cover off the, the front of the, of the glass there. Uh, on the front of the Zip1, you'll see that it's got a headphone jack. Uh, it's got a volume control for the headphone. It's also got a selector knob that pushes in and selects whatever you've highlighted on the screen. And it's got a dialing keypad with some uh, uh, buttons that are familiar if you've ever used some other Telos products like Auto, Connect, and Disconnect. Now, on the back side, the Zip1 has some audio inputs and outputs. Let's see. There's a couple of uh, XLR inputs. These are line level analog, or they can be mic level. And if you need phantom power for your microphone, well, it offers that too. You can switch phantom power on and off, and you can adjust the mic preamp gain, or just use it as a professional line level. On the output, there's a professional uh, line level analog outputs. If you need some digital input and output, well, there's a live wire jack right here. So you can plug this into your live wire network or into a, an Axia node and get uh, audio in and out via analog or aes -EBU and some other options too. There's also a jack on the back here that is for your wide area network, your WAN. And this jack uh, will connect to uh, whatever connection you have that goes to the internet, um, or maybe your private WAN if you're sending audio across a private WAN. There's also a couple of USB ports on the back. We'll show you what those are used for in just a few minutes. And there's also a, uh, a big uh, D-Sub 25 connector, 25-pin connector that can give you uh, parallel inputs and outputs. You can send contact closures from end to end. You can also program some of the pins to be uh, what we might call a panic dial or an automatic dial to make the box dial out from some other command, uh, some other closure. And also some status commands are available. And of course, there's a power uh, input right there, surge protected. So again, there's the front of the box. And also in the uh, shipping container that it comes in, you're going to find a few accessories. Here's an interesting one. It comes with a USB to serial adapter. So if you want to send and receive serial data along with your audio, uh, you can do that. Just plug this in the back. Uh, this is um, uh, designed to work uh, with the drivers that are in the box right there. Also comes in the box is uh, an Ethernet cable. In case that'll help you get it hooked up. There is a Wi-Fi stick that's TELUS approved and tested. So you can use this Wi-Fi stick if you need to operate this unit in a Wi-Fi environment. Um, also, there's um, a 25-pin connector if you need to go ahead and wire up some contact closures, inputs and outputs. And of course, a power cord comes with the unit as well. In fact, it comes with two power cords, one US standard and one European standard power cord. So, there we have it unboxed. Oh, I should mention, it also comes with a manual. It comes with a printed manual. You might find an updated version of the manual online. You can go to telos-systems.com to the support button and download the latest manual. Something else that's kind of cool, you can download a PDF version of the manual onto your iPad or iPhone or any other kind of device that lets you uh, store and look at PDF documents. So any, any kind of PDF reader will help you out with that. Now, let's get it hooked up and connect it uh, to another Zip1 somewhere and get some audio. Hey, we've just booted the Zip1 up. In other words, we plugged it in and let it come on. It takes about a little over a minute for it to come up. And the very first time you turn the Zip1 on, uh, it should enter this uh, setup wizard automatically. If it doesn't, you can just go to the setup menu on the front panel and tell it to go to the setup uh, wizard. Well, here we are. Let's see what it's asking us here in the setup wizard. It's saying, welcome to the setup wizard. Press 1 to get more information or continue. Well, let's continue. Um, what will be the network streaming interface used to exchange the coded audio with a distant peer? Uh, that's going to be, uh, in our case, it's going to be the WAN connector. It could be some other things, like it could be Wi-Fi. It could be a UMTS EVDO, like a USB stick. And it could be the wired LAN live wire connector. But in many, many cases, it's going to be the WAN connector that's going to do that for you. Now, how do you get audio to and from the ZIP-1? With an XLR connector on the back or the LiveWire IP audio? Well, let's choose the XLR connector for this demo. Do you want to access the unit's web interface through the LAN Ethernet connector? Well, well yeah, let's keep that option open. Do you want to register the ZIP-1 with a SIP session initiation protocol server? That's for making SIP phone calls. Um, we could do that later. For right now, I'm going to say no. We don't want to register with a SIP server although we are going to register with a different server called a ZIP server. Is the LAN Ethernet interface configured with DHCP? Uh, I'm going to say no. I'll provide the IP numbers, 
and I'm going to provide those um, later on. Because I'm really inter interested in the WAN interface. Is the WAN Ethernet interface configured using DHCP? And in my case, that's yes. And in many cases, that's going to be yes for you. If you have a DHCP server on your local uh, LAN, um, or that, that goes to your wide area network, the, being the Internet, then the answer is yes. Please enter a suitable device name for this unit. Okay, well, uh, it comes with a default of ZIP1. I'm going to uh, click that and backspace over that. I'm going to call it, uh, well, let's name it after, let's name it after me. How about K and then H for Kirk Harnack and 1. How about that? KH1 is the device name of this particular one. All right. It says apply settings and exit wizard. Okay. And you can go back to the wizard anytime by selecting Setup Wizard in the Setup Menu page. All right, well, good. Here we are. Um, if we go to the Status page, uh, here's what we see. Well, not a whole lot going on here. The uh, LAN and WAN lights are not lit. The ZIP light is not lit. In fact, nothing's, uh, no, none of the indicators are lit. Well, I haven't plugged in the, the cable yet. So here is um, a cable that goes to an Ethernet switch that's on my local area network um, that goes to the internet. Now in this case I'm saying local area network but in the, in the, uh, for the uh, uh, ZIP1 I'm calling that the WAN, the wide area network connection, the one that goes to the outside world. So let's plug that into the WAN port on the back and you can see as soon as we do we get a WAN light that's lit up telling us that it knows the cable is connected and now it's going to go out and find the ZIP server and connect. Oh, there it is. It connected to it. So at a minimum, we want to have a WAN indication and we want to have a ZIP indication. And if, as long as we have a ZIP indication uh, on the front and the status page, then we know we're talking to the Telos ZIP server. Let me pause for a second and say, what is the ZIP server? Well, it's nothing more than a directory. It's a directory of all the other ZIPs, all the other ZIP ones that are out there in the world, including yours. Um, you can, you can uh, register your ZIP one publicly with the ZIP server, or you can make your own private area on the ZIP server, and you can password protect that private area if you want to. Uh, a lot of radio groups will do that. They'll make a, a private area just for them or just for their call letters or just for their uh, radio group and city name. And uh, that will be password protected or not, but it'll be uh, in the ZIP server as a separate folder. Uh, so now let's uh, go to the directory and see what we have in here. Uh, if we push the auto button, um, just pushing it once shows us our buddy list. And the ZIP1 comes pre-configured with one buddy. One buddy. And that is the Telos line. So that's the Telos test line. Now we could just go ahead and dial that. We can just push the auto button. See, it's highlighted. I can't move to anything else. There's nothing else on the screen right now. So I can just push auto again and dial to the Telos test line. And look, it just connected. Uh, it takes it a few seconds for the audio to get synchronized. But it connected right away. And we're receiving audio. In fact, well, here's some headphones right here. So let's plug these headphones into the headphone jack and just see what audio is coming to us from Telos. Plug that in. Let you hear that through the microphone, and you can hear we're receiving audio from Telos. Now, we can disconnect that pretty easily if you want to just test this again. Hit the disconnect button, and it'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? You can push it again, or you can just go to yes. And now we're disconnected. We can reconnect by pushing the auto button, selecting the buddy we want to call, and pushing auto again. And um, you see it connected right away, and then it takes just a few seconds for the audio to sync up. Uh, also, the receive lock light is on. And you may have noticed within a few seconds, the bottom four meters populated. They show the audio and uh, the, the, the far end buffer, the receive buffer, and the transmit quality and the receive quality for, uh, for each end. So a total of four things are, are measured there. I'll get that, pull that audio away so we can talk over it just a bit. So now we're connected to the Telos test line. By the way, the Telos test line has a feature. You can only stay connected to it for 10 minutes. It'll disconnect you after 10 minutes. So don't think there's something wrong with your ZIP-1. It's just giving someone else an opportunity to call into the Telos uh, test line. Let's, um, let's disconnect from this for a moment, and I'm going to show you how to hook up the audio input. Uh, for an audio source, I could use a microphone, but I'm going to use this uh, trusty iPod with my favorite songs on it. And I'm also going to, uh, I, I got this cable that adapts eventually to XLR connectors. So I'm going to plug these two XLRs in the back. 
And remember in the setup wizard, it asked us, do we want to use the XLRs for our connection? And uh, we, we told it, yes, yes, we do. Um, we can go check the audio I.O. Uh, setup, and there it is, analog XLR input. I pre-tested the, the audio level from an iPod. It's kind of low. It's not really a professional line level at all. So it turns out that our mic level input here is actually pretty flexible. So if I just turn the iPod down to about half volume and turn the mic preamp gain uh, to its least sensitive position, I can actually get about the right audio level here. So let's back out of this and we'll have a look at the, oh, there we go. I'm already playing audio from uh, the uh, iPod and they're playing a Martina McBride song and um, that is going into the XLR audio input. So we can set this aside, still playing our audio. If we were to redial to Telos, again, push auto and uh, I could push the uh, select button here and it'll dial. I'm sending this Martina McBride music now to Telos. I don't think there's anybody there listening to it right now. And then we're receiving audio back from Telos, completely uh, different audio, of course. So that's how easy it is to get set up. What did we do? We ran the setup wizard where we told it uh, the WAN port was going to be our port for streaming. We could select something else like Wi-Fi or the LAN port, for example. Um, we also uh, gave the unit a unique name and we plugged it into our uh, local network here uh, using DHCP. Uh, it turns out that uh, most routers will allow this kind of connection to go on, will assist you in getting a connection to the outside world and uh, connecting to another ZIP1. It's possible, though, that you may encounter a, an Internet router uh, that is at, on the premises that is not so friendly to letting you get out and letting another connection come back in. So there are some techniques that we can use to um, circumvent that, and that would be called port forwarding. That's a subject for another video, uh, but in most cases, I'm finding about 85, 90, maybe even 95% of all cases, we can plug this right into anybody's router, set it up for DHCP, and be talking to the ZIP server and therefore we're able to make uh, calls to other ZIP1 units and share audio back and forth. There's a lot of other options in terms of setting up the codecs and the bit rates um, and uh, uh, setting up parallel end-to-end -end, uh, uh, contact closures if you want to do that. Also setting up, setting up the listen port uh, for the ZIP server. But those are all kind of Chapter 2 and Chapter 3 sort of subjects. You can see that in just a few minutes we've gotten connected to the Telos test line and we could just as easily call other ZIP ones as well. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, read the manual or give us a call or email at support at telos-systems.com.